and we are recording. Awesome. Hello, friends. Hope you are having a phenomenal day filled with joy and happiness. My name is Paul Tucker. I do not have a good camera for this sort of thing, so we're just going to do it as is with my voice and this little PowerPoint here. Um, last video, we were talking about uh, creating characters and coming up with sort of that initial idea for your, you know, your comic character or you know, whatever really character uh, that you are working on. But specifically for, for these videos, we're going to be discussing comic characters. And later tonight, you'll be able to catch a video with the creators of Chefs and uh, Demon Hunter Raven, Tyler Carpenter and Nicholas Muller. Should be a silly goose time, but there's more on that later. Uh, today we are going to be talking about skills and or powers for a character and coming up with that idea and what sort of the mindset is for doing that, or at least some thoughts on my end on that. But oh gosh, we're dealing with this again already. Okay. Comics you should check out. Uh, just as I had mentioned before, we have Demon Hunter Raven, Chapter 3, now on Kickstarter. We have The Flock, which is now on Kickstarter, and Chefs, which is on Webtoons. It's Webtoons. I don't know why I always put it as Webtoons, but it's on Webtoons. I'm going to put links for those in the description box below. So please make sure to go check out these awesome, awesome series. You have cover art, uh, Flock on the left. Demon Hunter Raven Chapter 3's Deluxe Edition cover uh, is in the middle there. It's really, really, really good looking. So you only have until Friday night, I think, before this is done. So you're going to want to go ahead and get that as soon as possible. And then you also have Chefs here on the right. Pasta La Vista is the first sort of full story that is coming from Chefs, which just launched on Webtoons last Friday. So you still have time to catch up now as the hype train keeps rolling through so that you're ready for Tyler's post on this Friday. Make sure you go check that out as soon as possible. He already has quite a lot of content on there. Uh, before we get started, just like last video, you can listen to everything I'm about to say. You can take it all in or you can not <laughs> do, do what you want. Uh, especially, you know, your creation, you're going to have your own rules and stuff like that. And anything I could say might not fit into the rules of, of what your heroes or, or magic system, whatever you've got going on, it might not fit into that. So just do what you want in the end. And if what you want to do is listen to some of what I say and what the three of us will be saying later tonight, you know, do that. But in the end, just do what you want. Uh, powers and skills should be approached with varying levels of effort depending on the character you're giving them to and the world they inhabit, okay? If we're dealing with something like Mistborn, you know, anything Brandon Sanderson writes, he is putting in a lot of rules and limitations for his magic systems or for his character's powers so that uh, it's, not a, it's not Gandalf just solving a problem at the last second, things like that. And you don't need to take it super seriously. You should, you should take your story seriously, but you don't need to put so much time into this that you never actually work on your story. Get the story done. Fun powers and whatnot for, for storytelling purposes are, are awesome, but in the end, if you're never telling your story, then it's mostly a waste of time. If it gives you peace and it gives you an escape or something like that, awesome. But if your goal is to tell a story and to get a story out there for readers, get the story done. Get the story done. And if you have to sacrifice some time with the powers, then so be it. Uh, this is a discussion, discussion on individual powers uh, today, not power systems. So we're not going into a deep dive into creating an entire magic system. This is on an individual by individual basis for your characters, if that, you know, for that type of world. There will be a discussion on power systems at another time, but this is not the time or place that we will be doing that. Uh, again, have fun. 
you should be having fun. If it isn't fun, you're doing something wrong. I know I, I know I said that you need to get your story out there if that is your goal, but it should also be fun. Okay, you're creating something unique to you, unique to your world. Uh, let it be fun. Let it be fun. It's work, but it should be fun work. Last time we did a basic walkthrough uh, of my mindset, or at least putting it into words as best as I could, my mindset in creating Sunchild, my battle hippie who lives in the world of Demon Hunter Raven, created by Nicholas Muller, chapter three, now live on Kickstarter. Don't forget, don't forget. We're uh, carrying on the rules from the last video into this, so remembering that you know, the world is Nicholas's. Okay, we're not going to do anything that would ruin the story that he's telling or mess with anything to do with his cast. You know, we can't do anything that blows up half the world just because I feel like it. But we're also going to make sure that we're having fun with it within our limitations. And limitations are something that we'll be talking about later anyway, so keep that in mind. Some assumptions, uh, why you might be here. You're trying to come up with unique characters and powers for your characters. Um, unique skills or powers for your character. Sorry, words, words are hard. Uh, you're trying to flesh out a power you already have. You aren't sure what skills and powers your character should even have. This is a super basic thing right now. Uh, this is just, this is mostly me talking about Sun Child. We will have more discussions about the powers and whatnot and, and coming up with power ideas and some brainstorming activities. This is this is basic level stuff. These first couple of videos where we're talking about this, we're just getting, we're getting that idea set, right? We have, we went to the store, we bought the candle, but we just haven't lit it yet. All right, we're still finding the perfect place for that candle. That's a really bad sort of comparison there, but that's, that's what I got. All right, uh, Sun Child. Okay, so for the skills and power guidelines, uh, should never come off as overpowered. I I don't like really writing overpowered characters who uh, are going to are going to be the driving force of the story, uh, protagonist or antagonist, because that's that's just not something that is fun <laughs> for me to to write or to watch or to read overpowered characters or characters who pull stuff out of their rear end too easily just get boring to me. Good limitations can can fix that, but if someone can scream their head off and suddenly get a new hair color and now be able to defeat the bad guy all of a sudden, that's boring. Uh, no powers that would be typically used uh, that would typically be used, uh, it's supposed to be used, uh, for aggressive measures. I didn't want, some, I want some child to be the battle hippie, right? There are going to be other characters who come from the same background as him, who had the same sort of upbringing, but for Sun Child at least the most, I did not want a power that was necessarily meant for battle or not meant for battle in the same way. Uh, weapons that are uncommon. You, you see the pictures, he has these chakrams. Uh, he, has, you know, he has the initial tool and then he does something to it. We'll, we'll get into that spiritual link at another time, but he, he links himself with them and they turn into these sort of energy chakrams that he can, he can throw and they will come back to him. Kind of like a boomerang effect. Uh, I didn't want any sort of shooting off random BS from hands powers. Um, you know, watching big fireballs and things come out or, or lightning bolts or different things like that are super, super exciting to see. But I wanted to approach this with, with a, you know, at least a few of the characters who are in Sunchild's End of the Demon Hunter Raven universe, world, whatever. I wanted the idea of influencing the battlefield. How do these characters 
influence each fight? What did they what do they bring past just the weapons and their kicks and punches, yada yada. So you see a lot of random BS being thrown out in a lot of comics where a fireball might as well be a lightning bolt or or a blast of water or ice, right? It's so rare, it seems, that it actually is consistently affecting the area in which they are fighting. And so that's what I wanted to think about at the forefront when coming up with Sun Child, Sun Child's powers. Um, and then I wanted him to be a team player slash piece of a larger puzzle mindset because of the situational philosophy or prophecy, not philosophy, prophecy that he's a part of. I wanted it to be a, you know, very much about being a team player and very much about being a supporting role. So instead of sitting and pondering and thinking about, oh gosh, what could, what could so-and-so's power be? What could, what could they do? What, what does it mean when they do this, yada, yada, yada? I'm going to encourage you, go through your music, your CDs, your MP3 players, anything like that. Look at the song titles, the band names, the lyrics, okay? This is very similar to what, I'm going to mess up his full name, but I know it's like Araki. Uh, who writes Jojo's Bizarre Adventure does. This is something similar because he, well, he's just a fan of Western culture and, and really music and things from all over the place. But a lot of the characters and their powers and backstories in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure come from like music. You have uh, Killer Queen is the name of an ability. We'll actually be talking about that one here in a bit. You have... Uh, characters named Dio or uh, Foo Fighters and things like that and or Metallica and you can see him getting inspiration for the characters based on the band's history or the band members or the songs or song lyrics song titles so so look outside of just comics and things like that and you might come up with something that is out of the box, something new, because you're looking for resources outside of just the comics bubble. Uh, as it says here, I came up with a future antagonist of, of Sun Child and his group uh, when I randomly remembered the song Fat Lip uh, by Sum 41. Some of you might remember that, probably millennials and younger gen x will probably remember it more than anyone else uh it's not like it's a huge big popular hit or anything like that but it, it just just listening to it and uh and and that sort of song title really got my mind going on an interesting idea for later and as it says here look around where you are right now look at every object every object in your home look at the at the things you see i you know i'm i'm looking at carpet books uh a door <laughs> broom candles fake candles things like that and see if you can come up with a power you'll we'll talk about here in a second one one particular character that araki of jojo's bizarre adventure came up with that deals with something that you would never really be thinking about as a power. Uh, your power doesn't have to start out as cool, as we'll talk about again here in just a second. Uh, it doesn't have to start out as cool to become cool through your storytelling. You can come up with fun ways to use things that sound super lame on paper. And because of how you use them, because of the characters you give those powers to, you can make them interesting. So I found this image because I, I was I was considering how to go about this. And this says top 20 useless superpowers. And there are 20 things here that, depending on how you want to look at them, could be incredibly useless. It says uh, acid tears, invisibility in the dark, control, remote control, 
communicate with fruit, bullet attraction, summon a lamp once, 75% levitation, trash detection, so on and so forth. Uh, these are silly things. Read your own mind, right? On paper, these all sound stupid. But I'll be honest with you, when I look at one second super strength, uh, revive bugs, ultra fast aging, absorb bad luck, uh, bullet attraction, especially, invisibility in the dark, some of these you could do something cool with bullet attraction and absorb bad luck. There, there is someone out there who could write an exceptional character with those powers. And honestly, I'm considering doing it now after seeing someone put this list together and call them useless superpowers. You're not telling me that there's some sort of great scene that could happen with bullet attraction, some badass scene or one second super strength there at the bottom left hand corner. You're telling me you can't come up with something awesome with those? It just depends on how you write them. Any, uh, well, I would say most of these. Read your own mind might be difficult to write well, but some of these you could. Some of these you could, and we'll have a challenge later for you to do that. So some fun examples to check out of weird you know, non-typical powers. Here at the top right-hand corner, this is a novella called The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. There's a magic system. Now, I know we're talking about individual powers, but there's only one character in this story who has the power or who has the magical know-how to do this. So we're, we're going to stick. We're going to go ahead and allow that one in. But she has these stamps that she can create and when she stamps a person, a thing, or a person or object, she can change the history of that person or object. She can change parts of it that could have happened in its life. And she uses them on herself later on, even though she's not really much of a fighter. She makes a stamp that, you know, she puts in her, in her skin that allows her to become this sort of badass warrior. Here at the bottom, you have, uh, in one piece, they have the devil fruits that you can get abilities from. And this person ate one uh, in English, which is known as the wash wash fruit, which has the ability to turn people into laundry. It is, it is the idea of laundry. Uh, she is a top ranking not top ranking, but a high ranking admiral, I think, or vice admiral in One Piece. And she has the, ba the ability to turn people and objects, as you can see here, some swords into laundry. And in that power, she is also able to cleanse these pirates of the sort of evil inside them that would make them do evil acts. Kind of an interesting power. It's not really a battle power but there are some interesting things that could be done with it <clears throat> and then from jojo's bizarre adventure uh, part five slap part five if you're reading the the books and then season four if you're watching the show uh, there's a character who has a they have stands in jojo's bizarre adventure which are like these manifestations of their power and in the English localization, it's called Zipperman, which is dumb because in, uh, in other, I don't want to this, because it's supposed to actually be called Sticky Fingers, but the, the character's stand can create zippers, which sounds so stupid, but the way Araki writes it makes you kind of want that power, like that would be your go-to's superpower is to to create these zippers uh because it's so it's so brilliant it's so absolutely brilliant when you actually watch it highly recommend it the show is so stupid in the best possible way and there if you're looking for power ideas it is a great show to check out for that 
and there are too many to name beyond these. But these are some really, really interesting off the wall powers and I guess magic. Definitely check them out. Okay, on uh, me on unique powers here are my sort of views on unique powers. Uh, there's nothing wrong with wanting a unique power, but also consider that your new idea might already exist somewhere. No one, no one wants to think that sometimes. I shouldn't say that. Some of us are okay with it, but when we, when we come up with an idea that we think is brand new and unique, we also should probably just accept that someone else has probably already thought of it and someone else who has put it out into the world. <clears throat> that does not mean that you cannot present it in a new and unique way. It's just that base level idea might already be out there and you should accept that. Uh, the Japanese are really good at coming up with fun and quote unquote unique powers. Again, JoJo's, One Piece, Black Clover. Uh, check those out if you need some ideas for new power types in your series or for your characters. Like some of these, some of these here that we'll go through, I think there's three that I put up. These are, these are powers that you can find in other places that have been done before, but that doesn't mean that these characters are any what, you know, any kind of similar to each other. You have the Human Torch from Marvel, Iroh from Avatar The Last Airbender, and Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. They all three have powers and abilities that allow them to use fire, but they all do it in a completely different way. The Human Torch you know, he, he uses fire in a very different way from a firebender, an avatar like Iroh. They have different philosophies. Scorpion, definitely more so than the other two. Human Torch and Iroh have more in common than Scorpion, but they all, they all use fire, but they use it in very different ways. It, it looks different when they use it, despite it being the same element that they're all using. In the same way, you have smoke. Okay, Smoker from One Piece, Delson from Infamous 2, Forsburn from the video game Rivals of Aether, which is like a Smash Brothers type game. Uh, they all use smoke. And again, they're all using it in different ways. Forsburn uses clones where the other two are more like becoming the elements that they use. And they all have wildly different personalities. And those personalities come out in how they use their abilities. Oh, reload. Sure. Okay. Well, it looks like some of those images aren't going to load, but that's okay. Uh, so bombs, right? Bombs. Bomberman, Bomb King from Paladins, and Kira slash Killer Queen. This is his stand, as I mentioned before. Uh, from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I think probably most of the people who would be watching this now have at least heard of Bomberman, if not played it. Uh, I know the other two, maybe it's not likely that you have heard or played or watched those, but I still figured I'd put those up. Bomberman, really simple sort of use of the bombs, generates a bomb, blows up in a little line. Bomb King from Paladins. Again, sorry those pictures didn't load. Uh, it's just not gonna it's not gonna work that's okay anyway bomb king has a variety of different bombs that do sort of different things they have remote uh detonation they have ones or yeah they have some that allow them to get you know jump get super jump or something like that or some that just control a big area or turn into a bomb uh himself uh, Killer Queen can turn anything they touch into a bomb, a remote bomb, or they have uh, an ability to create, I don't know word this, um, a time loop that, because this, this ability is owned by like a, a serial killer, and spoilers there, but if, uh, they, can, they set up this time loop in the story where as soon as someone finds out or someone asks a certain question about figuring out who they are or someone tries to tell someone else who they are, 
that person explodes and time goes back an hour. All right. And they're, they're all so different, but in, at the base level, the idea is bomb generation, manipulation, creation, or yeah, I said that already, but all very different despite having the base power. Oh man. So it just, sorry friends, it just looks like some of these pictures just aren't gonna show up. That's okay. Uh, okay, combat skills. I knew almost instantly that he would end up using shock rooms. I had a couple ideas when I was getting ready to send stuff to Nick that I wanted to use. I wanted to use something that was not a typical weapon. You could find it in other areas, but maybe was not something that you would see too often. Chakrams was, uh, was one of the options that I had thought of, and it's what I ended up going with. But I wanted smaller ones that he could throw, and then that larger one for that sort of oh shoot moment when he decides to bring that out. And my inspiration came from Kingdoms of Amalur, which is a really nerdy but awesome game uh, that you can find, I think, on Xbox. I think they just did a sort of remastered version and they're releasing new content. Uh, Tira from Soul Calibur and Maev from the World of Warcraft universe, they all use that same sort of chakram. I don't know why this sun is here. That's supposed to be in another slide, but who knows. Uh, sun Child's power. I ended up thinking aura based because I wanted to come, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted something that influenced his surroundings and the people around him. I wanted it to be a supportive role because as the, as the idea for Sun Child was forming, the idea for the other kids, slash as they grew up, uh, adults, as those came together, I started thinking, okay, how would this team look? How would, how would they work together? And how do they influence each other in their surroundings? So they, you know, they unlock these powers when they're younger. They, they, they gain access to them. And the, the powers are related to this weather pattern, sky pattern prophecy. Uh, and each one has a power that is associated with something that was going on when they were born in this very short amount of time. Right? Uh, yeah, Sun Child was, you know, his deal is the sun, as you might have guessed from his name. Sun Child was named after the role he, that's supposed to say he is to play, not his is to play. After the role, his is, yeah, words are hard friends, like I said. The role he is to play and the power he would inherit. He is the only one of the kids who is named after the role that he is supposed to take part in the role he is supposed to play in the grand, you know, in the grand scale of things. And so thinking about the sun, the sun makes us feel warm, keeps plants growing. It can make us feel good. I know some of us are still dealing with seasonal, uh, I forget the deal, SAD, depression. Uh, it can make us feel good and it's touch after a long winter can brighten spirits enough to keep us going. So that's what I'm thinking. When, I, when I'm thinking of Sun Child, I'm thinking about his, his aura. I'm thinking, you know, how can he influence people like the sun? You can't give him the power of the sun because that would be overpowered. And I'm not trying to do that. But it's that idea of what the sun means to us and to our world. And so while I was doing this, I also just thought about what some of the other auras are. And I, of course, these are hidden under question marks because I'm not trying to spoil everything yet. But, you know, the name came up of Radiant Aura. So Sun Child's aura is going to be called the Radiant Aura. So-and-so's is the Shadow Aura, Fortune Aura, Clarity Aura, Subjugation Aura. All of these are auras that affect the world and people around them. It is the power to keep 
others going. It gives a physical and emotional boost to the people who are around Sunchild, or people in plant life, okay, including himself. And uh, it, it heals wounds a bit faster. It, it keeps us in the fight. His whole idea is keep the people going, keep them moving forward, keep them feeling as good as possible. Sometimes, you know, having to deal with certain things, it's hard to feel good, but having the, him around there is, is about the best you're going to be able to get in improving that. And then after coming up with the idea of the power and it's this aura, which again, this is just base level stuff. Okay. Think of limitations. All right. So you, you watch my sort of mindset of coming up with the power, right? But I love Sanderson. Again, we're bringing him up, even though we're not talking about magic systems, Sanderson's second law of magics of magic uh, is limitations over powers limitations are sometimes just more important than the powers themselves as i said before i never want to make a boring overpowered character who can just scream their way into a new power level slash hair color whenever the writer can't solve the problem in a better way and you know i'm calling out anime and manga fights there because it's just boring to me no, every every few no no disrespect to fans of like Dragon Ball or whatever, but every few years, I'll I'll see some new game come out or something like that, and he has a new stronger than ever before power level or whatever, and it's really just him with a new hair color. Uh, they're gonna run out of colors. I don't know if they've done purple yet. I know they've done pink but i think that was for a different character anyway <laughs> i didn't want that uh over overpowered is boring so limitations make things more fun for us and they make them more fun for the readers having limitations allows you to creatively use your character's powers and show that your character is so much more than just their powers so if the hulk just get stronger and stronger by being by getting more mad that that's i mean i know there's some people who, who love the hulk so please please forgive me on this but for for me i would rather see a character creatively use their powers against someone who is stronger than them than to just get more mad and punch harder right it, that's just not, that's not fun. It's not fun to write. It's easy to write, but it's not fun to write. And it's not fun to experience as an audience member. Consider the useful distance of powers when power powers are available and can power, gosh, I'm struggling with my words, friend. Sorry about that. Can power run out? So how far can this character use their power? Is it available all the time? Can the power ever run out? Limitations done well. Dairy King from Chefs. Our buddy Tyler has a character named Dairy King in Chefs who needs to be consuming dairy in order to use his superhuman abilities. All right. Now, dairy you can find pretty much everywhere, but it is technically a resource that could in some way disappear or greatly be reduced right? in a post-apocalyptic world dairy king might struggle to remain superhuman again calling out another comic book that we talked about earlier uh or shouted out earlier adam's personality and experience sometimes personality and experience are great are great great limitations and you can find that in demon hunter raven you know we are we are meeting Adam or Raven at a very early point in his in his growth into the demon hunter and so he's he's going to get his butt handed to him quite a bit and you'll see that 
devil fruits in one piece? This is debatable. This is debatable. I put it up there, but I will say in in a way it should count though, because it is a one piece is a story about pirates. They live in a world which is mostly covered with ocean. Devil fruits give the user great and powerful abilities for the most part but you lose your ability to swim and you will become weak in water on the you know in a a world that is just barely land at all you suddenly can't really do much and every time you go out on a pirate ship you are risking your life past just you know pirates being out there you could very easily drown and die at any moment Escanor from seven deadly sins uh is in a lot of ways extremely overpowered uh he has one minute every day where he becomes invincible he becomes the personification of power but his power starts and falls with the sun so as the sun starts to rise he starts growing power at noon from noon to 1201 i something like that they don't really mention too much about how that should work but anyway from what we can assume is 12 to 1201 he is invincible and then he slowly starts losing his power again until it's dark out and he looks like a completely different person and he is weak and vulnerable. So he goes, he is both the strongest and the weakest member of the team, depending on the situation. And then every single, again, I said, we're not talking about magic systems, but also we're kind of talking about magic systems. Uh, Every single magic system created by Brandon Sanderson, Mistborn, Stormlight, uh, I'm sorry, Stormlight, Stormlight Archive Series, Elantris, Emperor Soul, uh, The Rhythmatist, things like that. If you are looking to create a good power, power system, magic system, spells, anything like that, if you're looking to create some strong content there, read Brandon Sanderson, or at least go on the Wikipedia page that connects all of his stuff. I think it's called The Copper Mind. Go there and read about the different sorts of powers, because I think it'll give you exactly what you need to create something strong, something fun, but something that has limitations that create excitement and create tension instead of make your readers want to fall asleep. So thinking of that, radiant aura limitations. Because it's an aura, I wanted to give it the same, give the same benefits to his enemies that he gives to his allies. He is a benefit to his allies and a risk to his allies at the same time. He has to overpower his enemies completely, not just with physical strength, but with mental abilities, you know, mental capabilities in order to, in order to win, unless they are just vastly underpowered compared to him or you know they already started weaker than him he's really got to bring his a game he has to bring more than his a game he has to bring his a games a games a game some wounds can't be healed take that as you will for now lack of training with his power has made it inconsistent and weaker than it would be otherwise so he's not as effective as he could be in terms of his power. Using his power is linked to painful memories, so he tends to avoid it altogether. Maybe there's an emotional block for your character that doesn't allow them to use their power. I I know I keep bringing it up, but JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, there's a character in season four slash part five who is known, who's named Fugo. And he is, he fears his, anger he fears his anger issues so he doesn't like using his power which is a physical manifestation of his rage of his poisonous rage the character has a disease that it it can 
infectious. He fears it, so he never uses it. And in the time that he's in the show, I think he uses it once. And that's it. So think about that as a possibility. Can't really be stealthy with the occasional glow that comes with the aura. Again, he's inconsistent and not as, not as uh, well-rounded with the ability as he could be. So there might be some side effects, maybe something that leads to something else that he hasn't really considered. But he can't really be stealthy because sometimes he, the boy's just glowing. He's just glowing, shining like a diamond. Uh, can only influence a few meters around his location. If an ally is too far away from him and they get wounded, they're probably just screwed if, if some child is too far away. So we're adding limitations so that we can create good tension and good drama and not make him too strong so that it can be more fun when he overcomes those enemies. <clears throat> so the rundown here, the power to keep the fight going as long as possible, this is the Radiant Aura we're talking about, a strong support power that will be great for team fights down the road, hint, hint, wink, wink. Radiant Aura's ability also helping enemies means that some fights will need to be won outside of brute strength. I love a good trick or two in order to win a fight. The ability is simple enough to understand through stories we tell. You'll, even if you don't understand it fully now, you'll get an idea later and could expand into more as time goes on. Hint, hint, wink, wink. All right, so here is a challenge for you. Thank you for uh, listening today. And uh, I hope my sort of mindset in coming you know, putting this character together, I hope it helped you or gives you some ideas on how you can run with things. Think about, think about your themes and whatnot, okay? And remember, I talked about influence. I wanted the characters to be an influence on their surroundings and their world. It's something I like to write about. And so I chose to turn it into a power, okay? So what I want you to do is see if, you know, think about your own themes, think about how you are how you write, how you create characters, and just see if you can use one of the useless powers on the next slide. We've already seen this image uh, to help you create a fun new character. Don't write a full story if you don't want to, but if you can, you know, see if you can push yourself. Push yourself to prove whoever made that list wrong. And I want you to post your ideas in the comments below. But again, here it is. Pause the video now if you need to, to come up with it. But use one of these. See if you can come up with a character that, uh, that has one of these powers and tell us how you would make them interesting. All right. I, for one, think absorbing bad luck or bullet attraction could be done really, really well. Really, really well. Anyway, uh, it's not night. It's, it's afternoon. I'm on spring break. But uh, have a good night, friends. Again, these images here are done by Bill Jersey. On the right, he drew that with colors by Ichthys. And on the left here, we have the amazing Joel Souza, who did this other Stone Child piece. So, so fantastic. But anyway, I will be on later tonight with Tyler and Nick. And I hope to see you there. I hope you come by. These videos are going to get better over time. We're going to work on them here and improve. But with my setup now, this is the best I can do. I think next video, I might try and create a brand new character as I work on the video or something that's in my mind, try and work with it. I have an idea. You're going to get bored of listening to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure references here, but I think we might be using something from there to create something cool. Anyway. Thank you for stopping by, friends. I hope you have a fantastic day. And uh, just be good people to each other. Be nice. Be respectful and be your best selves. Hasta luego.